Well, I'd like to introduce to you today Terry Lemerand. Terry Lemerand is a retailer, an author, an educator, an entrepreneur. He has worked in this industry for more than 40 years. Many of the formulations that he has designed and developed continue to be top-selling products on the market today. He is up to over 400 and counting. His personal website dedicated to health and nutrition is available at terrytalksnutrition.com. Terry Limeron is one of the most interesting presenters that it's ever been my fortunate experience to have been able to listen to, and I hope that you are all going to enjoy today's presentation on short burst exercise. Welcome, Terry. Kind. In fact, you read that script just perfectly that I wrote for you. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was extremely nice of you. Um, this is going to be a great program, I believe. And first of all, I want to remind our listeners a couple of things. Uh, we were designed by our creator to move, to always be active. It's funny because we exercise more in America. We have more exercise places, more gyms, more training centers, more places where we could become active than any other country in the world. Although we have more overweight people than any other country in the world. We overeat, we overdrink, and we overexercise. Now, I believe exercise is really important, but I don't believe that we should overexercise and get into programs that are really counterproductive for our good health. I've toured through Europe many, many times and other countries around the world. And they are always moving. We have a tendency to take elevators, escalators, and do very little to maintain good health. But in other countries, it's very, very common to see 80-year-old women on a bicycle going to the supermarket picking up their groceries, putting them on the baskets on both sides of their bicycle over the rear tire, and driving home, taking their bicycle home. I watched one lady one day climb a very, well, a pretty good-sized hill with two big grocery bags in under each arm, and I stopped and I offered to carry them. She said, no, 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 no. Uh, I could, of course, I, maybe she was afraid of me. Maybe she thought I was going to take her groceries away, but she just... That was just routine for her. And they tend to go to market almost every day. They are always moving. They're not exercising, but they're always moving. And I've gone to, in fact, a very good friend of mine who lives in Milan, Italy, invited me to go to his workout place, his, his gym that he pays money to go to. And I was just amazed because the gym was no bigger than Oh, I, it could have been any more bigger than a couple of bedrooms put together. In the United States, we see huge areas to work out. Gyms may be two or three floors sometimes and have every piece of equipment you can imagine and thousands of people working out. And yet we are, our population is 75% grossly overweight to the point where we are obese. Something's wrong. And I think something's wrong in the way we exercise, and we'll discover, some, we'll discover some of that today because Americans are becoming more increasingly more sloth-like than ever before. With the average American, 43% of men and 52% of women are completely sedentary. They don't, they don't do anything. They sit on couches at night. They watch TV, and we could get this down to a very, very small amount of exercise and be healthier. Okay. Official exercise recommendations are modest. The Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, recommends two and a half hours of moderate intensity aerobic type exercise or one hour and 15 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise per week. And I think we can get that down to even less than an hour and 15 minutes. I think we can get it down to about less than an hour of intense exercise. And I'm going to show you how to do that today because I think we can become very, very effective in just a very short period of time. But what most people do with exercise, if they aren't achieving their goals, they increase the exercise or work out harder. But you have to realize that exercise is stressful. 
exercise destroys our body, and exercise causes our, our, our muscles to be more damaged, and if we exercise too much, we are causing too much inflammation in the muscles, and they do not grow and become healthier or muscle tone, we lose our muscles. So weights or push-ups, muscle strengthening twice per week would be a great benefit. I just read a beautiful, beautiful article on a program of elderly people changing their diets, changing their exercise programs to use weight-bearing exercise. I am not in favor of any cardiovascular exercise. You can use weight-bearing exercise to be also aerobic, to also strengthen the cardiovascular system of the body. But weight-bearing is more important because as we use cardio, if you look at people that run marathons, and they run marathons consistently, and that is extremely stressful. We are actually destroying our body by running marathons. The bottom line of marathons, it is, a, it is a sport. It's not health inducing. It's not health constructive. It's a sport. People that want to run marathons, that's great. It's a challenge. If you want to do as many marathons as you want, I saw where one gentleman ran a marathon every day in a different state every day for 50 marathons. He ran one every day for 50 days, one in every different state. That is a goal. It's not everybody can do that, and not everybody should run marathons, especially people that are unhealthy, people that are not in shape. You should be in shape to run a marathon. Marathons, look at the people that run a marathon. They're very, very lean and very thin and have no muscle because running a marathon destroys the muscles. As you lose weight, by marathons, because you're not using anything to build the muscles, like weight, weight bearing, some type of weight, uh, type of exercise that uses weight or pits your body against a, a weight to move it or to push it or to pull it. That's how muscles gain strength. So if you're losing weight by a marathon or by running, because most people say, "Well, I'm trying to stay in shape," but half the weight you lose is muscle. So when you look at somebody who runs a marathon every day or every week or every month, whatever they do, every year, they're losing all their muscles. But if you look at somebody who is a track star, who runs very, very short distances, but very, very intense, very fast, they have lots of muscle because they build muscle through intensity. And that's what we want. In fact, that is the best way to build your heart because your heart is a muscle. So as you lose muscle in your body, your heart is also losing the muscle. 80 per <laughs> excuse me, Cheryl. 80% of Americans do not meet these goals, and we can show you how to do less. All right. Look at this. The percentage of the population older than 15 with a body mass index greater than 30. Look at where America is. Number one. Wow. What a record, huh? We are, have more people overweight in America than any other country in the world. And we have more people exercising than any other country in the world. We have more fitness centers. We sell more sporting equipment. We do more sports than any other country in the world. And look where we are. It's the countries that do more activity. Look at the bottom, Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark, France, Austria. Italy, Norway. Several years ago, I was in Oslo, Norway. I was there to visit a company. It was in winter. And the president of the company skis to work. He leaves his home, which is several miles away, and he cross-country skis to work. It's just activity. It's just staying more active. So the consequences of the no-exercise lifestyle this image was created in 2007. The obesity rate in the United States is now, oh, we are just skyrocketing. Rather than 31%, it's now 35.7% and approximately 4% in Korea. 
What are we doing wrong? Okay. Why you aren't exercising? Common excuses, of course. How many of you used of these? I don't have time. I'm too tired. Probably you're too tired because you don't exercise. I can't afford to join the gym. You don't have to. Every exercise to strengthen your body, using your body weight, because your weight is weight-bearing, so you can strengthen your body. My back, my knees, my shoulders, they all hurt. They all hurt because of lack of exercise. I am too fat, which is a lack of exercise. I will help you overcome all of these, all of the obstacles that you present because you are put in the way that you put in the way of getting healthy. Okay. Part one: Why you should exercise. Okay. Cancer prevention. Studies have shown exercise gives from a 10 to 25 percent, 25 percent reduction in the risk of breast cancer. In fact, it's probably one of the top reasons why we have such an epidemic epidemic of breast cancer in the United States. Huge. Regular exercise associated with up to a 50% reduction in colon cancer reoccurrence. One of the number one causes of death in the United States is colon cancer, of all the cancers. And we do so much in encouraging people to have a examination for colon cancer. When we can Risk to reduce the risk by up to 50% reduction in colon cancer. Vigorous exercise associated with a 60% reduction in risk of death from prostate cancer. When you look at all the statistics of choosing a healthy diet and moderate exercise, what we could do to reduce the cancer in America and reduce the risk of almost all of our other diseases, okay. And a healthy heart. Data from the 10-year women's health study showed moderate exercise reduced risk of heart disease by up to 41%. Just one to three hours of low intensity exercise a week reduces the risk of high blood pressure by 11%. And a brisk 60-minute 60, 60 walk five days a week reduces risk of stroke by 50%. Do you know how much we spend on drugs and health care to reduce heart disease, blood pressure, and strokes? And the health care program, based on what doctors, physicians, medical researchers, drug companies, spend billions and billions and billions of dollars, and they have no drugs that will compare with the reduction of risk of blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke as much as just food, exercise, and a healthy life plan. Okay. <clears throat> Better mood and a sharper mind. That also comes along with regular exercise. Review of 40 clinical trials saw that regular exercise reduced risk of anxiety by 20%. People who exercise regularly are 25% less likely, likely to develop depression. And regular exercise, and this is an epidemic today, and everybody fears this, and as they get elderly, and the elderly reduce their exercise or their activity, or they sit around and they play bingo and play cards, they don't get outside. Regular exercise reduced risk of Alzheimer's disease by 50%. No drug in America can do this. Okay. Diabetes. Diabetes prevention. A brisk 30-minute walk daily reduces the risk of diabetes by 30%. Moderate exercise reduced blood pressure, blood sugar rather, by 50% compared to no exercise. Physical activity combined with modest weight loss reduces risk of type 2 diabetes by as much as 58%. We could, we could change the health of America dramatically and reduce health care costs. 
Healthcare is going to bankrupt America. Okay. Walk in at least four hours a week. Reduce risk of hip fracture by 41% versus walking less than one hour per week. A one-year strength training program increased women's spinal bone by 9%. A 10% increase in bone mass can reduce fracture risk by as much as 50%. All done by exercise. Okay. So part two, how should you exercise? We're gonna, we're gonna change how you should exercise. Extreme exercise hurts the heart. Does not improve heart function. Does not prevent heart attacks or strokes. A study of endurance athletes. Now, marathons and those who run marathons would have to be classified as endurance athletes. Found that they had greater levels of coronary artery calcium than moderate exercisers or even sedentary people. Exercising like running for long periods of time is more harmful to the body than sitting down and doing nothing. And look who publishes, I shouldn't say publishes, sponsors all of the marathons. Hospitals around the country. This does not make sense to me. A study of marathon runners found up to a 50% increase in levels of heart damaging enzymes which is released when the heart is pumping excessively hard for long periods of time. This is stress. Marathons are, it's a stress, stressful event. And I see people out there who are obese, thinking, hey, this is going to help me get in shape. Friends, that's not going to help you get in shape at all. It's going to kill you. 12% of marathon runners show signs of heart damage and had higher risks higher rates of heart disease than moderate runners. A study in Denmark found that those who jog slowly for only two and a half hours a week lived about six years longer than those that ran faster and more often. You don't have to feel you need to run a marathon to be in shape. You don't need to think that you have to run miles to be healthy. I'm going to show you a very simple solution at the end of this program to get you in really, really top shape. Okay. It doesn't take hours of working out to see benefits of your, for your health. Two groups of overweight but otherwise healthy men use an inclined treadmill three times a week. Group one, single burst, four minutes, four minutes of exercise, not a marathon, not three plus hours, four minutes of exercise plus warm up and cool down, totaling 57 minutes of activity a week. Now, 57 minutes is done over seven days because you're only doing four minutes of exercise. Group two, multiple bursts, four bouts of four minutes of exercise followed by three minutes active rest plus warm up and cool down. Run, rest, run, rest, run, rest, run, rest. Totally 129 minutes of activity, just over two hours. You have to slow it down to a very short period of intensity with active rest in between, which I'll describe more as we go on to the program. Results after 10 weeks. Both groups saw increased oxygen capacity of the blood, weight loss and reduction in blood pressure, but group one got the result in less than half the time spent exercising. Less is more in this case. Exercise less. I don't run my dogs for hours to get them in shape. I have a chucker. I, I think you know what a chucker is. It looks like a I don't know how to describe it, but you got a ball at the end of it, and it's easier to toss a long distance. When I chuck it, my little girl 
Australian Shepherd, runs like crazy to get the ball and brings it back. So she ran like crazy, which, which is a short burst exercise. And then she ran it back gently, which is a active rest. I do that 10 times, and she has gotten more healthy exercise than if you run the dogs for two to three hours. Less is better. Okay. <clears throat> a small investment in exercise can have a huge, large return for your health. A study of 55,000 adults found that five minutes, five minutes of aerobic exercise daily, you say you don't have time, five minutes reduces the risk of heart disease by 45% and the risk of dying of any cause by 30%. If you can find the name of a drug that can reduce heart disease by 45% and the risk of dying of all cause, or any cause, by 30%, let me know. Sprint training, not marathon training, sprint training. That means you run like crazy for a very, very short distance. Eight minutes a day, eight minutes a day is as effective as burning male body fat as jogging for seven hours per week. Eight minutes versus seven hours. And, you, and we say we don't have time. Because I don't think we realize the intensity is more important than the distance. And people over age 60 exercising at 10 sets of six seconds, six, six seconds, all out sprints, total of 60 seconds on an exercise bike, increased functionality, ability getting up from a chair and walking ability up to 20%. You and I both have time, no matter how old we are. And I'm going to show, I don't care if you're 90 years of age, this works. Okay. Strength training is as important as aerobic exercise, and I believe it is more important. Because aerobic, you don't need weight bearing, you don't need any weight, you don't have any pulling or pushing against the weight, and that strengthens the muscles. Aerobic exercise burns up the muscles. In obese teens, strength training alone reduced body fat more than training or combined endurance and strength training. In women with POS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, both strength training and interval training reduced body fat and improved insulin resistance without affecting body weight, which indicates gains in lean muscle mass. We want to be stronger. You, ladies, if you're saying, oh, I don't want muscles, you're never going to gain muscles because you don't have the body type to have you gain muscles. You will get muscles, you'll get strength, but you're not going to be bulgy looking because men and women have a different lattice work of muscles which appear differently. So you don't have to worry about working with weights because you won't get muscles. You'll get strong and healthy and have good muscle tone and be able to get out of a chair or whatever you want to do without trying to push up with both hands on the arms of the chairs to get up. And I see this all the time. They did a study in nursing homes where they went in and gave these patients in the nursing home a good protein diet with extra fats and a strength training program. And in time, they were no longer using their walker, they're no longer using canes, and they're getting up out of their chairs without assistance. In men with diabetes, strength training led to a significant reduction of A1C levels. Now every night, I think it's Mertosin, the drug that says it lowers A1C levels. Well, so does training. So does strength training. Why do we want drugs to be the answer of all of our conditions? Let's take responsibility and do 
a good, healthy diet with good exercise. Okay. My favorite. Here is the kettlebell. It looks like a cannonball with a handle. The handle, I call it a horn. It works the abs, the thighs, the butt, the rear end. Now, kettlebells have been shown to burn up as much fat and burn up as much calories, 20 calories a minute. And I think you could even do more than that, depending on how well you can use the kettlebell. This was a test of fit athletes who knew how to use the kettlebell doing swings. This is the only exercise you have to learn, or I want you to learn, because it'll be the most productive exercise for all, all people using the kettlebell. You can do kettlebell swings for 20 minutes. Now you won't do 20 minutes of kettlebell exercise. These results are equal to running a six minute mile or fast cross country skiing uphill. Kettlebells are not expensive. You can buy them anywhere, online, any sporting goods store, any, uh, I think any, almost any department store. They don't take up a lot of room. You don't have to store them out of the, out of, in fact, I, I use the kettlebell for my door stopper when I hold my door open because it tends to swing shut. So I set my kettlebell by the door so my door doesn't swing. It's easy to learn. You can combine it with, for strength and aerobic in one workout. Remember how it looks. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be grabbing the horn, the handle, with both hands. And we'll show you more. Okay. Now here's the way to do it. Number one, first of all, stand up straight without the kettlebell. Set the kettlebell just a hair behind your heels so that when you bend down to pick it up and when you bend down, it's going, you're not going to bend over. You're not going to lean over. You're going to bend out as if you were going to sit down on a chair. The kettlebell is just a, an inch behind your heels on the floor. So as you pick it up, you're already going to be standing up straight with it, which is a, a position of momentum. So that kettlebell will start coming up from position one to position two. And you don't have to go any further up than position three. Position four is a no-no. You don't want to be like that. Look at the spine and look at it's it's all out of proportion. You don't have to go that high. You only have to go just chest high. And as you're just learning, only go to position two. This is aerobic and weight bearing. This exercise will help you we use 400 muscles in your body. Now what you can also do if you want, add one more exercise. Just take the kettlebell by the horn with both hands and hold it tight to your chest and then do squats. Now the weight of this kettlebell comes at a variety of weights, anywhere from a few pounds to as much as 125 pounds. Choose a weight that is well within your range. Don't use something that you have to struggle with or to use bad technique. I would rather have you use a weight that's underweight than overweight because you're gonna be doing this swing maybe 20 or 30 times, one after each other. One, two, all the way up to 20 or 30. Might take you about a minute. And then you're going to rest for two minutes, hopefully active. An active rest means you don't sit down. You either can jump rope, or you can get on a stationary bicycle and pedal very slowly, or you can jog in place, or you can do jumping jacks, just to do something that continues to use your body or, and, and makes your body move and keeps your blood flowing and keeps your lactic acid flowing out. Just do something 
to stay active for two minutes. So you're going to exercise the kettlebell with one minute, and you're going to rest actively for two minutes. That is a cycle. That's one repetition. And you're going to do that five to six times. So it takes you about three minutes, a minute of kettlebell swings, two minutes of active rest. That's three minutes. You do five or six, that means 15 to 18 minutes. But you don't do 15 to 18 minutes of exercise. You're doing five to six minutes of exercise. You only need to do that two or three times a week. And that's all the exercise you have to do. You'll be breathing at a very high rate at the end of your 20 or 30 swings. So it's aerobic and also weight-bearing. This is the easiest thing to do, and I've taught many, many people just the swing. That's the only thing you have to perfect now, and they have gotten stronger in every muscle of their body. They maintain their weight. They don't even have to think about their weight, and particularly one day we'll talk about the ketogenic diet. When you combine the ketogenic diet, and quickly if you want to go to a good website that talks about the ketogenic diet, Go to ketogenic, K-E-T-O-G-E-N-I-C, ketogenic-diet-resource.com. Great, great website to help you learn the ketogenic diet. It's a healthy protein and fat diet. Oh, don't worry about fat. Eat a lot of fat, worry about your carbohydrates and sugar because that's what caused America to become fat, not fats, carbohydrates and sugar. So the proper technique is so important. Don't bend over. Keep your bell. See how that in the third position, how that bell is straight out. You don't want it hanging from your hands. You want it straight out, and the momentum of your body standing up. And you kind of want to, kind of want to throw your hips into it. You're thrusting your hips forward to make the momentum of the bell come up. You're not lifting the bell. You're you're letting it come up through momentum. You, and you go, if you want to go on, uh, if you Google kettlebell swings, you will find all kinds of videos and YouTubes as to how to do it correctly. This is really, really important. And in fact, uh, I have a website called TerryTalksNutrition.com, and we have just decided that I'm going to, I have a workout, um, a little kind of workout place downstairs in my, in my home. And that's where I do my exercise and I do my kettlebells. Uh, I do some other weight work, too, uh, because I want to do a little extra. But I'm going to be doing a video of the kettlebell swing that I'll put on my website shortly. As soon as I get a chance, as soon as I get some time uh, to do it, I will. Uh, maybe it'll take me about a month before I get it up there. But I will put the kettlebell swing on my website. Okay. Okay, don't forget about food. This is so critical. So critical. Want to get lean? Dump the carbs. Don't carb load. What happens to carbohydrates? Well, in order for them to be absorbed, they have to convert to sugar. So all carbs are sugar. And all sugar is sugar. The American diet is 70% carbohydrates and sugar. We did get fat today in America because we eat fats. We have been brainwashed. We have been beaten down about fats. Dump the fats. So we have fat-free, no fat, skim, uh, fat-free, and you know, everybody is so happy because it's fat-free. No. Dump the bad fats, like omega-6 fatty acids, those that are found in corn oil, soybean oil, all the packaged goods in the supermarket are made with soybean oil because it's so cheap. 75 to 80 percent of all the soybean oil in America is dumped into our packaged foods and into our desserts, into our breads, into our all the all the flour products. So we want to dump the carbs, dump the sugar. Some people think carbs are the optimal fuel for effective workouts. No, wrong. One recent study found that men who take in only 11% of calories from carbs burn twice the fat as men with high-carb intakes. 
And the typical American diet is 50, I've seen reports, up to 70, 50 to 70 percent of our diet. <clears throat> so what has made America fat? Carbohydrates and sugar. And 75 percent of Americans are highly overweight or obese. I ran into a lady the other day at one of my lectures, and she said, boy, that's just the opposite of what I've ever been taught. And But she says, look at me. She says, I am so overweight, I, you can't believe it. She says, I sure wish I could lose this weight. I said, what have you been doing? Oh, I've been following a fat-free diet. And she said, now I understand why I am like this. So we need to go to proteins to make our body stronger, to make our muscles stronger. We build our muscles with protein. And we should be getting about a gram of protein for every pound of body weight. So if you weigh 150 pounds, 150 grams of protein. 125 pounds, 125 grams of protein. We need to have the protein to build our muscles, to retain our muscle strength. That does not mean it's a high-protein diet. That means it's a protein diet with fats. And fats should even be higher. Good fats, olive oil, butter, cream, lard, and all the fat we find in chicken and duck and meat and fish, and fruits and vegetables and berries and seeds and nuts, and dump the carbohydrates, dump the bread, dump the starch, dump the pasta, the crackers, cookies, um, pretzels. And we, are, we are carboholics in America. When I got into my business a long, long time ago, let's put it that way, a long, long time ago, I weighed over 250 pounds. I'm five foot six and a half. I had very severe hypoglycemia, very severe depression. I was, I was not a nice person. I was belligerent, obnoxious, sarcastic. I was unpleasant. And somebody changed my life, got me off the carboholics, got me off the carbs and the sugars, started losing weight. And now, many, 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 many years later, I am leaner and thinner than I've ever been. I have more energy. I feel fantastic. I work out. I travel all over the world. I'm in the office by 5, 5.30. Um, I do more today than I could have done, let's say, 60 or 70 years ago. So it's a diet and a form of exercise and you don't have to count calories. You don't have to measure portions. You don't have to walk away from the table hungry. Eat the foods that were meant to be eaten. Use the activity that we were meant to do. And throw in some kettlebell swings. And three months, six months from now, you're going to say, oh, my God, I'm, I can't believe how I feel. Okay. No more excuses. Part four. I am too tired, I am too fat, I am too sore. Well, how do we get rid of all that? And I'm too busy. Well, first of all, address under any underlying adrenal or thyroid problems by, first of all, we need plenty of sleep. Sleep. You need eight to nine hours of sleep at night. Without getting that much of sleep, we are stressing out our body. We are aging our body. But we could use essential oils of lemon balm, lavender, mandarin, and ravensara to help us sleep better, to get a better quality of sleep. And then also, too, we need to help address any adrenal or thyroid problem. And I did a webinar not too far back on adrenal and thyroid. So you can go into my website, my website, terrytalksnutrition.com, and you go to the webinar section, the archive section of the webinars, and come up with the adrenal and thyroid. You can go through that program. And if you are, because if you've got pain, you can use the combination of curcumin, boswellia, DLPA, bromelain, pancretin for muscle pain and soreness. It works great for, for the average person and even up to athletes and pro athletes. Clean up the diet. Avoid processed foods, grains, sugar, and then see my website for more information and go to the ketogenicdietresources.com website. Good daily multiple can make a big difference. Make sure you get all your vitamins and minerals. 
If you have 30 minutes a day to watch TV, check Facebook, or look at your YouTube, you do have time to exercise 15 to 20 minutes. That's only five to six minutes of real exercise, but it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to cram all those five to six exercises in there. Because you can do five to six minutes, but you need two minutes of active rest between each set. That's all you need to do. All you need to do. Okay. Get going. A comparison study found that getting 30 to 60 minutes daily of any type of moderate intensity exercise was equally effective for weight reduction and body mass index as a specific program of endurance or strength training. Bottom line, pick something and do it. Just become more active. I notice people that go to a workout area, go to one of these fancy training centers, and they drive around the parking lot looking for a parking place close to the door so they don't have to park way far away and have to walk to the door, and then they're going there to work out. Huh. Okay. Questions. Okay, this is a good time. Cheryl, I'll turn it back to you. Well, thank you so much, Terry. We've really got a lot of questions that have come into the queue. I think the first one I can answer, this individual is looking for an app to download for her phone um, or for one of the sports watches that has a timer that would help with the interval training. And you can find those apps on either iTunes or the Google Store, uh, wherever you get the apps for your phone or your watch, um, and just just search on interval training, and you will find a wide variety. Some of them are free. Some of the basic models are free. Uh, some of the models are, if you want some of the more sophisticated features, may cost a couple of dollars, but you can find them there. Another question we had was how to get pictures of the kettlebell exercises. Um, this presentation was sent to all of you. You all have a handout, so you can use that picture. Feel free to use it if you need it for something. You can also use Google and Google on kettlebell or kettlebell positions, click images, and you'll have a wide variety of pictures in order to look at uh, if you're trying to find a picture for kettlebell use for your own, either for your own use or for a website or whatever you're using it for. All right, Terry, we also have a question about somebody who has an injured knee. They have some cartilage damage behind the kneecap, and this person was told not to do lunges of any kind. What would be the best way for that person to use the kettlebell? Does it use the same muscles as a lunge? Uh, no, it does not, but it depends on the individual. I, you know, Since we don't know who that individual is, we don't know the, the severity of the injury. Uh, I would also check with their physician before they do something. But mm -hmm. squats are very... Um, how should I say? They're all, they're, how should I, how, they're very safe in most cases. I would not do lunges. I would not do leg extensions. But squats are very, very easy to do for most people to the point of where you feel pain. Don't go beyond the pain because the pain is telling you something. It says don't do it. So you might only do a half a squat. You might do a quarter of a squat. Um, but you, the, the kettlebells will give you much more strengthen your knees without damaging your knees. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever run across anybody that has knee problems that complained after they did the, did the kettlebells. So let comfort be your guide. If you start out and you can only bend a little bit, squat a little bit, then you should stop there. Yes? Yes. Don't go beyond. Don't use the adage that no pain, no gain. That's, that's silly. Pain is there for a reason. Pain is like the red light on your dashboard. Whoa, something's wrong. Stop. You don't want to find out when the damage is done and then look up with why the red light's there. The pain is the red light that's telling you, whoa, stop, don't go beyond this point. Mm -hmm. um, here's a person who has a question about uh, potatoes, and they're wondering if they're con when you're considering carbs, are potatoes included? And when planning a meal, how much of a potato should one eat? What are the and, and then as a second part of this question, what are the suggested number of meals and the number of ounces of protein and meat source. So what's the optimal, how many times a day to eat, how much protein at each meal, uh, can you eat potatoes, are they considered carbs, and if you do eat a potato, how much of a potato should you eat? Never eat a potato. That's the bottom line. Never eat a potato. Potato is 100% starch, and it converts into sugar or glucose faster than sugar does. It's one of the worst potatoes, one of the worst carbs to eat. So avoid all potatoes. 
Um, I would recommend anywhere from three to six times for meals, and you should be getting about 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal. So if you're only eating three meals, then I would kind of bump up the amount of protein. I would probably try to get 30 to 40 grams of protein for three meals. Otherwise, the ideal way is to get at least 20 grams um, or 15 to 20 grams six times, depending on the size of your body. You just want to make sure that you get one pound of, excuse me, one gram of protein for each pound of body weight. And you can eat any, you can eat as much as you want at each meal. That's, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20 grams to 25 grams. If you're, only, if you're eating only three meals, you might want to get up to 30 or 40 grams. Um, here's a follow-up question. They want to know if sweet potato is the same as a potato. No, sweet potatoes are fairly good. Uh, they are converted much, much slower, even though they're called sweet. They're converted very slowly into sugar. Um, but I still would not go hog wild on them because it's still a carbohydrate. I would make sure that I had a small portion, uh, just a, a, a daub of the um, sweet potato, but lots of butter on the sweet potato then because that blocks the uptake of the sugar. Excellent. Here is a question about uh, this person wants to, has a question about the diet. This person has hypothyroid and adrenal issues. This person says, I feel I cannot do the ketogenic diet. I get weak when I drop the carbs too low. I also have to be gluten-free. Do you think if I upped my fat intake, it would help me? Absolutely. The people that say they can't do the ketogenic diet because they don't have energy or they don't feel good on it because they're not getting enough fat, most people fear fat so much that they try to avoid it, and so they don't use as much. Um, I have lost weight, maintained weight, and... Uh, I consume at least, I probably say on the average, I consume about um, six to eight tablespoons of fat per day, two to three tablespoons of olive oil, two to three tablespoons of coconut oil, uh, one or two tablespoons of MTC oil, and I use butter like it's cheese. I cut off uh, two or three big slabs of butter. I put it on my broccoli or I'll put it on my uh, steamed vegetable or whatever I might have that's extra. Don't fear fat. As long as you've dropped the carbohydrates down and you add down to about 2 to 4%, you can eat as much fat as you'd like. In fact, 70% of your diet should be fat. All right. Um, here's a question about relaxation. Um, and they want to know, is, in your opinion, is relaxation, <laughs> how, what level of importance is that into health and wellness, and do you recommend massage therapy? Well, first of all, let's let's uh, clarify relaxation because everybody is relaxed. Too many people are sitting on the couch relaxing. So relaxation after intensity. Do a kettlebell swing and then relax. But relaxing, how do you, you know, um, if you do enough exercise and you get enough rest, I don't know what you mean by relaxing. Relaxing. Um, I think they mean, I would think that I'm guessing that they mean reducing stress in your life. Um, well, of course, if you, if you exercise like I recommend and you get eight to nine hours of sleep, you're going to reduce your stress load like crazy. And if you have tremendous stress, there's other things we can do for stress. There are good herbal compounds that reduce stress, like echinacea. That's a very special form of echinacea that reduces stress. Um, magnesium reduces stress. There's good ways to reduce stress. If eight or nine hours of sleep and, and good exercise doesn't do it and your diet doesn't do it, then there are other alternatives that can be included to reduce the stress factor. And I do highly recommend massage therapy. I think massage is fantastic. Excellent. Here's a lady is asking a question about breakfast. She likes oatmeal with chia seeds for breakfast. She wants to know, um, she's always felt that that was a healthy breakfast, but is that too many carbs for breakfast? Absolutely, too many carbs. I would start off my breakfast with two or three eggs cooked any way you want. can be boiled, can be poached, can be uh, soft fried in butter or coconut oil or lard. Um, I would have maybe a dish of berries or half a grapefruit. Uh, I might have two or three good health, uh, healthy uh, slices of bacon, uh, maybe a cup of coffee. Uh, that would be my style of breakfast. I make a protein drink because I don't have enough time to, to make a meal like that. So I just have a quick drink, and um, I make up my drink with uh, protein powders and egg whites and and um, and uh, egg yolks and berries, and I blend that up, and I drink that, so it only takes me a few minutes. 
but uh, a good protein and fat breakfast will set your your metabolic process for the rest of the day. If you have a good protein fat breakfast, you'll reduce at least 500 calories a day less. You just won't consume that many calories. So you'll reduce 500 calories a day by starting off with a good protein fat breakfast. And that means 500 calories a day over a week, that's 3,500 calories, that's one pound loss. So you'll just feel better, you'll have more energy, you won't pick at foods, you won't binge at foods, you won't be looking for carbohydrates. That breakfast at whatever it is, six, seven o'clock in the morning will last you six or seven hours in a day. Is that because it doesn't um, dramatically raise blood sugar and so people stay satisfied longer? Right, it doesn't raise blood sugar levels. It takes longer to be digested, where grains and, and, and carbs are digested in a, in a couple of hours, where proteins will stay four or five hours in the body and give you more energy and more endurance and more stamina, and you won't be as hungry. All right. Excellent. All right. I want to check, make sure that I got everybody's question here. I think, Terry, that you covered them all. Uh, folks, if you think of a question, uh, that you didn't get a chance to ask Terry, please just go to terrytalksnutrition.com. There is an actual uh, place on that website where if you have a specific health question or if you have questions about today's webinar, you can ask Terry your questions directly. Just type it in and give us your email address. We are very uh, we protect your email addresses. We never sell them or share them with other people, uh, so they will only be used by Terry Talks Nutrition, but just type in your questions and you will be able to get that information. Uh, thanks so much, Terry, for today's presentation. My pleasure. It was very enlightening. Thank you. Uh, folks, for more information, if you want to watch us again or if you have someone that you think would benefit from listening to this on short burst exercise, today's webinar, Please know that within the next day or two, it will be uploaded to YouTube. We now have a Terry Talks Nutrition channel, so it's very easy to go on to YouTube and watch this or any of the webinars in the Terry Talks Nutrition Educational Webinar Series. Um, there's also a location on the Terry Talks Nutrition website that has links as well to past recordings and lists of upcoming events. Our next events, uh, we're going to have Mindy Green. She is an amazing presenter on March 2nd who's going to talk about aromatherapy for home and family and nothing to sneeze at, safe and effective allergy relief by Dr. Peter Josling. That will be on March 8th. So we have some excellent upcoming webinars. I want to thank you all for your attention today. If we can ever be of service or provide you with any more information, I hope you'll get in contact with us. I hope to be seeing many of you again at an upcoming webinar. And until we meet again, good health to you. Bye-bye.